Good morning, class. Day two of Cindy Ellen. We're going to finish our five-finger retail, and we're going to see what happens to her and try and figure out how is this story different than the regular Cinderella. So let's listen along to the story and see what happens. Their shadow's 20 miles behind them, and they won the horse race. They even beat Joe Prince. But Joe didn't seem to care. He rode herd on Cindy Ellen right up to a quarter of twelve at night when she suddenly recalled her godmother's warning and went galloping home. By the time she got there, her fine duds had shriveled into sorry rags again, but she still had plenty of gumption. After a while, her stepsisters hobbled in, all stove up from the rodeo. Ha <laughs> ha! You missed the champion cowgirl! The older sister jeered. Nobody knows her name or where she disappeared to. And that old Joe Prince is eating his heart out, said the younger one. I bet she comes to the square dance tomorrow night, said Cindy with her new daredevil grin. The next evening, her stepsisters got all dressed up like a sore thumb and strutted away to the dance, leaving Cindy Ellen all alone. But not for long. What's that? She said, peeking out the window. It looked like a cross between a comet and a dust storm. It sounded like silver bells mixed with dynamite. Let's get cracking, sweet pea, shouted her fairy godmother. You're late. Rustle me up the biggest, dustiest, lumpiest squash you can find. And zingo! The squash became a stagecoach. Next, we check the trap line, said her godmother. Quick as a wink, she turned six cactus mice into six dappled horses, a fat pack rat into a stagecoach driver, and a rough, tough horned toad into a stagecoach guard, riding shotgun beside the driver. But what about my ugly old clothes? asked Cindy. The old lady answered with a blast of fairy dust that melted into a dress that shone like the sun, the moon, and all the stars together. The skirt floated over petticoats as soft and puffy as summer clouds. A rainbow of jewels glowed around Cindy Ellen's neck, and the little diamond spurs sparkled once more upon her boot heels. Thank you, ma'am, she cried. The fairy godmother blew the smoke from her pistol holstered it, and dusted off her hands. Remember, Miss Cindy, pretty is as pretty does, she said. Magic can backfire. Midnight or bust. Cindy promised, and the stagecoach rumbled away. All right, class, take a minute and describe all of the magic that the fairy godmother used to change Cindy Ellen and her stagecoach and her horses. All right, now I'd like you to turn and talk to your partner about what do you think is going to happen for the rest of the story. Make a really good prediction and pause, pause this video for a second. All right, let's continue listening. When Cindy Ellen arrived at the Cattle King Square Dance, the fiddlers were tuning up for a toe-tapping jamboree. Joe Prince reached for Cindy's hand the instant he laid eyes on her. Buckle on your partners, folks, he called, and tell them to hang on. Let's shake our hooves like lightning until the early dawn. And Cindy answered, Hurry up, cowboy, don't be slow. Alamande left in do -si do Hand over hand and heel over heel, Joe and Cindy danced the daisy chain, the whirl away, the curly cue, and the grand sachet. They made their feet go wickety whack. Swing em, boys, cried Cindy, and do it right. And Joe called back, swing those girls to the middle of the night. Twirling, swirling, Cindy Ellen lost track of time. 
until all at once she heard the clock begin to strike twelve. She hightailed it out of there, lickety-split. Whoa! yelled Joe, hot on her heels, but he couldn't catch her. One of the diamond spurs fell off Cindy's boot as she ran, though, and Joe picked it up carefully out of the dust. Take a moment and tell your partner how is this story different than the original Cinderella that we listened to the first week. That's right, Cinderella loses not a glass slipper, but a spur. She loses her diamond spur. So let's see what happens. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, not a particle remained of Cindy's gorgeous outfit, except for the second diamond spur, which she tucked away in her hip pocket. Pretty soon, word got out that the champion cowgirl was a wanted woman. She'd left Joe Prince so lovelorn that he was tracking her throughout the territory and he vowed to marry the horsewoman whose boot fitted the little diamond spur. He tried it on many a foot, but not one could wear it. At last, he came riding up to Cindy's father's place. Go shovel out the stable, hissed the stepmother, and Cindy reluctantly obeyed. First, Joe tried the diamond spur on the younger stepsister, but no matter how he stretched the straps, her hoof was too big. The older sister had crushed her feet into little bitty boots. So just for an instant, the spur almost fitted. But then her boots slit open and her toes popped out like puppies from a basket. And Joe Prince muttered, sorry, and headed for the door. My turn, said a voice that stopped him in his tracks. It was Cindy Ellen. And although her mean stepsisters almost died laughing, Joe let Cindy have her chance, fair and square. And when he put the diamond spur around her dirty little boot, it fitted perfectly. Then she pulled out the second diamond spur and buckled it onto her other boot. And at that very moment, Cindy's little horse gave a whinny. And everyone heard a noise like... Wingo! Wango! Kazing! Let her rip! shouted Cindy Ellen's fairy godmother, brandishing her golden pistol. Hold your fire! yelled Joe Prince. But glistening sparks of fairy dust were already sprinkling down everywhere. They turned Cindy's clothes from cotton to satin, and they put quite a twinkle in Joe's eye. And Cindy's horse began to sparkle. Yeehaw! yelled the fairy godmother. So Cindy Ellen and Joe Prince got hitched and lived happily ever after in a ranch house full of love and rodeo trophies. Cindy's family moved to town where both stepsisters married city slickers. And Cindy's little horse kept his sparkling coat and his glittering hoofs to the end of his days. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to our story. I want you to finish your retell today. So we are going to take a moment. We're going to finish our retell. So you have got to find the problem from this story. You should have finished that yesterday. You got to write down the solution and draw your favorite part in your five finger retell. So you should only have two more things to do in your five-finger retail today. Take your time and finish it, and then post a picture of your work. I can't wait to see it.